Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Grammar Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So spoiler season rolls on and there's a lot of exciting spoilers and also ones that have already been leaked uh, and that I already talked about. I actually got a couple of comments yesterday like, hey, when are you going to talk about Ulamog? I actually talked about Ulamog quite a long time ago. Uh, so make sure that you check out the, uh, the leak episodes as well. There's a lot of exciting spoilers these days, yes, but there are also a lot of exciting uh, leaks that are now officially confirmed because these spoilers actually came out at the end of the episode. I will be just having just a roll of all those cards that have been leaked previously that are now officially confirmed. So you shall see those and also some reprints out there as well. With all that said, though, let's jump into the brand new spoilers. First up, Argent. I never know. Is it Deus? I think it's Deus. Deus? I'm going to go with that. An artifact for one and a white enters the battlefield, two oil counters on it. Whenever two or more creatures attack, put an oil counter on it. Pay two tap, remove two oil counters from it. Eggs on target, not land permanent. Its controller draws two cards. So this is kind of like, um, gosh, like oblation-ish. Oblation is shuffling, though, okay? That being said, this is like repeatable oblation in a way. Again, you are saying that thing's gone, but you get a benefit. You get two cards. I mean... You can use this on yourself, right? It doesn't say target uh, non line permanent opponent controls. So, like, if you would have just, like, a creature token in play, you're like, I don't really care about that. Okay, let's just draw two cards for two mana, basically. That can be quite nice. And also, keep in mind, it's get whenever two or more creatures attack from anyone. It does not have to be yourself. It can be yourself. When anyone has two more creatures attack, you get an oil counter on this. Obviously, that does take a little bit of time to build throughout the game, but, I mean, at a certain point, you can keep building and building and building. And obviously, if you do have proliferate effects as well, that's where this really can hit home. When you're getting extra counters on this, essentially for free, just by proliferating with other things, then, yeah, being able to use those to remove. It's an interesting, you know, kind of removal. When it comes to, like, what kinds of decks might want to see it, I do think it's more so, like, maybe artifact-centric decks that are a bit aggressive with creatures or, obviously, proliferate decks. Moving on, my gosh... Okay, um, Collective Resistance. Instant for one in a green, Escalate for a green, Mana, choose one or more, destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, target creature gains Hexproof and Destructible until I have turn. Now, I'm not trying to oversell this, but this is a very, very, very good card. Um, yeah, it, it's really, really good. Like, uh, what, what's, the, like, the one, like, Re Return to Nature, like, those, essentially, like, as vibes of that, which does see a lot of play, it's a flexible removal spell. Again, essentially, when you're in green and you're paying two mana at instant speed for a removal spell, you want to see, you know, choose one, essentially, destroy an artifact, destroy an enchantment, and then third thing that you usually don't pick as much, but it's nice to have. This is a very nice thing to have. Because, like, Return to Nature is, I think it's Return to Nature. I'm sorry if I keep saying the wrong one, but it's like, okay, or Exile card from Graveyard, which can be amazing. That being said... Being able to have the flexibility of either have this be a removal spell or a way to protect your creature can be absolutely huge. And by escalating this, you can get all of it. You can get all of it. Again, this is three mana, destroy an artifact, destroy an enchantment. If that's what you want, you get three mana, destroy two things. Or it can be four mana, destroy two things, and save one of your creatures from a board wipe or target removal. Like, so... This is very, very good. Again, it takes up a slot in your deck that is removal, but it also it kind of adds in, you know, some flexibility to it where it's like removal or, you know, protection, plus or minus, it could be both. So, yeah, it's a very, very good card. Very efficient, very effective. Uh, yeah, just very impressed. This is going to see, in my opinion, a ton of play. It's a very good removal spell to consider for a deck that can also just be protection. That can be both. Moving on. Amped Raptor. This is just, it's a funny name. Amp Raptor's like, I'm so amped. I just drank an energy drink. I'm a raptor. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, two on dinosaur for two mana first strike. Enters the battlefield to get two energy counters. That's why I'm amped. Uh, then if you cast it from your hand, exile cards to the top of your library to exile a land card. You may cast that card by paying an amount of energy equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. Um, yeah, this is specifically I would say for an energy deck or like. A low to the ground deck I guess because you probably will just lose out on that card if not like unless like your average curve for your cards are like two or less which usually they aren't for most decks out there you're missing out on it so this is definitely not like for like a dinosaur deck this is more so again for like energy deck outside of that not really in my opinion I could be wrong but not, not, not really next up 
Blood soaked insight. So yeah, uh, in the uh, leaks, I did talk about how we got a very, 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 very good. Well, actually, I'll, that'll be in the um, at the end of the episode as well. You'll see that one. We got a very good MDFC that kind of showed off that hey, uh, we have dual MDFCs now, which is bonkers. And now we got one for each color. Just to spoil that a little bit. Blood soaked insight, a sorcery for seven mana, but you're probably not going to pay that much. The spell costs one less to, uh, to cast for each one life your opponent's lost this turn, so it can cost just as low as just two mana, depending on the right deck. Like, if you've got a group slug deck, this is guaranteed essentially to cost just two mana. Or if you swing in combat and hit someone for five, great, cool. Uh, target opponent exiles the top your cards of the library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. If you cast the spell this way, mana of any type can be spent to cast it, so yeah that's quite nice being able to like steal the top three things uh, of an opponent's library and again until the end of your next turn which is like the best way that these things are worded like not the end step but the end of your next turn you get it for a full free turn so like this could be like two mana for three cards keep in mind it does say play so you can play lands out of that it's not just cast so you can play lands out of that and i forgot to say on the back side here we go yeah i did kind of mention it though enters battlefield taps taps for one or two colors it's i mean these are just very good lands like already the already like mdfcs that we already have seen um like uh oh gosh why are none of the names coming to mind ignore the fact that i forgot the names of all these i'm thinking of the green one balaged recovery there we go those see a ton of play because it takes up a land slot in your deck which is like not really taking a spot at all sure it's a slow land but uh it's worth it for that and these are like oh this is also mana fixing for me too while also being a great card for me as well. Yeah, it's going to be a great include in a lot of decks out there. Next up, Suppression Ray. Sorcerer for five mana in Azorius. Tap all creatures target player controls. You may pay X and uh, X energy. I should say X and energy. No, X energy. Then choose up to X creatures. Tap this way. Put a stud counter in each of them. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. Like, is this just for energy decks? No. Like, it, it's not. Like, just being able to tap all creatures target player controls off of a land is quite nice. Is it better in, you know, energy decks? Absolutely. Be able to get stun counters on them. But yeah, it's still useful. Again, like if you want to get your army through, cool. Like you're like, you can't block this turn for five mana off one of my lands. That's quite nice. And again, this is one that actually does tap for either white or blue. You're going to see this pattern. So there you go. So again, in an Azorius deck, it's like, oh, I just want a free way to tap my opponent's creatures. Oh gosh, what's that one? What's the Elsa commander? Whatever that one is. Uh, the Icy Crown Hilda. Hilda? Whatever that one is. Yeah, that, that would love this card. So yeah, definitely sees play uh, in a good amount of decks, I would say. Again, just having a free additional card in your deck that doesn't take up a spot. I mean, it makes your lands a bit slower, but still. Next up, Drowner of Truth. It's a 7 6 Eldrazi with the Void that costs 7 mana in Simic. When you cast this spell, if Colossus was spent to cast it, create 2 0 1 Colossus Eldrazi Spawn Creature Tokens with the Sacrifice a Creature, add Colossus. When it comes to like the usefulness out of all these this uh, i mean i did kind of read through most of them uh, but this seems to be on the lower side of that like okay like having just an extra free creature not free creature but like takes up a spot as a land in the deck seven six for seven nice like and if you do get a colorless mana to cast it awesome getting you know like a temporary ramp with that is lovely if you don't like sure like are you gonna include that probably not in my opinion but you never know anyways it is just taking my land slot so there you go and it's about field tap taps for either green or blue next up legion leadership this one will definitely see play in my opinion instant for one in boros colors until i turn double tar creatures power against first strike gross so the first strike is just like okay i mean that is a good combat trick obviously but I mean, this can just be like out of nowhere, take an opponent out again. Like a Voltron deck is going to like just be foaming at the mouth for this card being like, oh yeah, it just takes up a land slot in the deck. And all of a sudden I can just be like, oh, my commander comes through for 11. And they're like, oh, well, I guess I can take that. It's fine. It's only 11. And then you're like, ha 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 ha. You didn't block my land takes you out. Double the power. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any kind of like power matters type synergy. I mean, again, it's even just a great like blocking effect too. Yeah, if like someone's coming at you with a big creature, you're like, my creature's half that size. Double its power against first strike, takes your creature out. Great. So yeah, this one again, just taking my land slot can be very, very, very good. So yeah, just uh this one does tap for either a red or a white. They'll come to play tap, but that's okay. Next up, revitalizing repast. Um Repas? Repast? What? I don't what kind of word is that? I don't know. Anyways, uh, this one repassed. Okay. This one might see the most play though, or it'll be up there. This is very, 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 very good. 
instant for Golgari mana. So either a uh, green or a black. Put a counter on target creature gains indestructible on turn. Again, like I talked about earlier, okay, with like, uh, uh, hey, you're making creature indestructible. Like that just happens to be on removal. Now we have uh, protection that just happens to be on a land. The going rate for like getting a counter indestructible on a creature is just one. So this is like already that efficient, essentially. Like withstand death sea play and that doesn't give the counter either and that's just in green this one gives you more flexibility on like what mana you can use to spend on this again it is just a land yeah this one's going to see a ton of play in my opinion like it's kind of like the feign death type effect i can never remember the name of the mdfc that's in black that's like a feign death type effect like when it dies it comes back into play i think you lose two life on that one too anyways let me know in the comments below what the name is uh, and uh if i uh, if i messed up on that one but yeah being able to just have like on one of your lands in your deck just a way to protect a key piece that's huge. Again, just like, okay, my commander is indestructible. Ha, sorry, your destroy spell did not work on it. And uh, yeah, it's huge. That's huge. Or also counter synergies obviously work really well too. Like, oh, okay, like whenever counters place on this or like doubling up counter synergies can obviously work very well. This one's gonna see a ton of play. Uh, I can easily see this one being never budget friendly for me. Uh, old Growth Grove is the backside and it's buffalo tap, path through either black or green. Yay, moving on. Rush of Inspiration instant for three mana. And is it? Draw two cards and discard a card at random unless you pay two energy. Here's the thing. Like, unless, like, you're incredibly precious about what your cards are. Like, like if you have, like, a combo deck where you're like, oh, I need these specific cards in my hand. Or, like, or you're really, I mean, like, discarding at random is bad. Like, it's not that, like, you don't want to do it. But is that going to stop just an isn't player that is not playing with energy to, like, be like, oh, I can't use that card then? I don't think so personally are there gonna be like feel bad times when you play this and you're like okay I drew two cards they're like two lands and I discarded like my best spell in my hand yeah but are there gonna be just as many times if not more times where you draw like two good cards that you actually need and you discard a card you don't need like a land or whatever absolutely so yeah just having this on a land for you where you have card advantage that's not that bad like again three minutes of speed we finally just got um gosh what is it like um uh, like divination but instant speed i can't remember the name of it but yeah draw two four three mana instant speed in blue we finally have that now so draw three discard one is not that bad we do have like other examples of cards that are you know there but like the random obviously makes it a little bit worse but again it's on a land so you can you complain like again obviously interjects be like yeah i'll do that i'll just you know just uh pay two energy and i don't have to discard a card uh so yeah there you go uh the back set is of course and about field tap that's for blue or a red crackling falls that's an interesting sound for falls next up glasswing grace uh, an aura for five mana and orzov enchant creature hand creatures plus simple student has flying and lifelink uh gosh what the, the beautiful art um gosh i can't remember the actual card i used to play uh like uh, standard boggles with glaive cover scout and there was like a three mana gift of orzava i think that was the card this is basically that i think no but in plus almost one flying lifelink but still anyways yeah uh this is good i'd say it's not as good i mean again when it comes to like the hierarchy of like these kinds of cards i'd say mdfcs are typically better when they're like not creatures not auras i'd say that's just better when it's just a spell when you get like extra value out of it because like the creature is like a seven six that does nothing except unless you have spent a couple and you get extra things this one's like okay it is good like and there are reasons to be like okay like if i have a voltron commander obviously that's nice or if i have a commander that cares about getting through that flying is nice the lifelink is nice as well to pad your life total so like a life gain strategy could use this too but again like auras are just like an inherent two for one like if your commander or whatever this attached to is dealt with you just lose this there's no and they're starting to make it so like more and more auras are like hey when this hits the graveyard you draw a card you get something else like you get another benefit or you get like an etb off it you get extra benefits for it just being there or it's harder to deal with this isn't that paying five mana for this is definitely over costed like these days what i expect to pay four i mean like three might be not enough because or might be too too little because i'll plus two plus two but like yeah, like, would this see any play if this was at three mana, like, without being on a land? No, it probably, I mean, a little bit, like, for aura decks, obviously, but, like, no, not really. Because, again, auras are just inherently a two for one. That makes sense. On a land, the five mana is kind of holding me up a little bit. Like, again, for specific decks that want it, like I mentioned, like, Voltron, get through, gain life, yes, and pump off of a land that's lovely. 
Again, decks that really want to get their commander through for a certain reason, like a combat damage trigger, trigger or again, like lifelink, get life game decks, want to gain life. It's it's not bad, but it's like not definitely the best. I mean, again, it's just, it's on a land. So like you can just chuck it in a deck because like it's not to really take on a spot in your deck. But again, be careful. Like re don't replace every single one of your basics with non-basics. Okay, that's never a good idea. And there's Battlefield tap, tap for a, a white or a black mana. Next up, Strike the Harvest. Again, just what I said on that last one applies to this. And I don't know why, maybe it's just because the mana value just seems a bit better, but this one I think will see more play. And also I just think the color combination for this one just slightly better than that one for what this one typically wants to do. Enchantment Aura for three mana in Selesnya, Enchant Creature, Enchant Creature is plus one for each creature in or enchantment you control. So an Enchantress style deck, yes, will like this a lot. Probably more so than the previous one when I talked about like the kinds of decks that might want that. This is like, yeah, sure, like an enchantment on a land, why not? So I guess that's kind of the thing, like an Enchantress deck in those colors is less likely, but you can use the other one. Anyways, this one though, like a massive pump effect for again, if you've got a bunch of creatures, if you've got a bunch of enchantments, especially, this is really, really good. Just on a land, it can be just a massive pump effect, kind of like um, all that glitters ish, but it changes out artifacts with uh, creatures. So like, if you do have a deck that revolves around auras, great. If your walls are on enchantments, great. It revolves around a massive amount of creatures, potentially as well. Again, it's not really taking up a spot in your deck. But again, or is it just a inherent two for one? So unless you like focus on enchantments and we have a bunch of energy or enchantments and energy, enchantments, synergies, or synergies, it's simply not a card that you just throw into a deck. You might, but like this is, I do think a little bit better than the other one, probably because it's lower to the ground. It can also just give a ton, a ton, a ton of power. Next up, oh sorry, uh, Haven of Harvest to the backside, tap for a green or a white. Stump, stomp. That's tough, tough to say. Sorcery for one and a gruel. Target creature control deals damage equal to its power target creature or planes work you don't control. Yeah, this is going to see a good amount of play as well. This is removal at two mana. It is sorcery speed, so there's a like downside to that. But again, it's on a land. You can't really complain too much. But yeah, this is like, this is, I can't, they don't really have a, they have a name for this one where it's like, it's not fighting, but it's like utilizing power. It's like, it's like one-sided fighting. It's like, it's like sucker punching. Let's just call it sucker punching because you're not fighting another creature. You're just hitting them and they're not hitting back. So being able to have one of your creatures just sucker punch an opponent's creature or planeswalker uh, that's quite nice. Um, I don't like that they put, like, you don't control. Come on, wizards! Like, ah, let us do some, like, fun, like, brash taunter things, too. Like, come on! Like, why limit that? Why limit that? I mean, I can't complain against on a land, but still. Uh, yeah, being able to just have a two-mana removal spell. Again, if you have a decent amount of creatures with a decent amount of power, this is just two-mana, get rid of whatever creature or planeswalker on the board, essentially. Again, that just is part of a land, so it's lovely. And it's battlefield tap, pass for red, pass for green. Okay, so I think it was the last one. Again, the, the Demir one, you might be like, where's the Demir one? I've looked at all the nine. It, it's at the end of the episode. That was already leaked. I already talked about that one. It's a tutor. It's really good. Uh, Conduit Goblin. Cool art. It's just like, hey, dude. I'm all electrical and stuff. I probably play in like a punk rock band. Anyways, 2-2, two, two, Goblin Warrior for two mana in Boros. Enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters. Energy, man. Beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay energy. If you do another target creature control, it gets plus one zero against haste on the turn. Um, yeah. Goblin, Warrior decks, maybe. Energy decks. That's about it. Moving on, Cranial Ram. My goodness, the art on this thing is just so metal. I mean, this kind of looks like, um, like, uh, what's it, like Alien, like the movie, like the like the head of a, the Xenomorph. Is that the name? Anyways, it looks like the head. Gross. So I expect like another little head to be in there, like at the mouth. Uh, a little mouth, I guess, as the tongue. Artifact equipment. Something off-putting about that. For Rakdos colors, living weapon. I love that living weapon is coming back. Uh, enters the battlefield. Make a 0-0 Phyrexian germ attached to it. Coop creature gets plus X plus one because it doesn't need the toughness to survive. Or X the number of artifacts you control, I guess. Oh, yeah. It would still survive. If it was plus X plus X, it would be much better. Uh, it's basically, this is basically equipped to basically cranial plating. Without the activated ability to like attach at instant speed, essentially. But it's just like, an additional cranial plating in a way, which is huge. It also comes with a germ, which is lovely. So yeah, this can be a massive amount of power. Again, like artifact type deck. Again, which also includes like treasure decks too. If you've got a ton of artifacts, this is a massive, massive, massively powerful creature. I mean, it only has one toughness, but still it can hit hard. You can fling it, whatever. Uh, the other like power matters kind of synergies as well. But also just like, yeah, if that worm, or that worm, the germ gets dealt with, not a worm, a germ, 
uh, attach this or even just be forced him like oh, I'm sorry germ goodbye attach this to my commander hate you for a ton probably take you out yeah this is a huge 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 extra problem fact again if you basically have cranial plating in a deck and you're in Rakdos colors you're gonna want to consider this one too so there you go moving on Dross Claw another living weapon equipment for uh one in a black living weapon so again the Phyrexian germ quick creature plus one plus one whenever quick creature attacks each one lose one life uh, equip two this one's just okay in my opinion like if you have like those attack like trigger kind of decks like like issued essentially doubling that up sure like that could be a C consideration but like other than that yeah it's nice that it drains your opponents pretty low to the ground you can equip it it's it's just nice uh eldrazi ravager six six eldrazi with annihilator one we're getting more and more annihilator things oh goodness uh five and a colors sacrifice to eldrazi return it from your graveyard to your hand that's quite nice to be able to get it back you can also cycle it away which is very nice cycling to at some point, I've got to build like an all fluctuator deck, right? Like, I think we need more lands that still cycle it too, but I want to build like an all fluctuator deck where you literally, the deck's goal is just get fluctuator out and then just cycle your entire deck because it's all cycling too, reduce them nothing. That's off uh, topic right now. So outside of that deck, which would really want this one, um, yeah, Eldrazi Tribal. There you go. You can keep getting this back by sacrificing like Scions or sacrificing Spawns. Or I guess giant Eldrazi too, if you really want to. Like if a board wipe's happening, you can be like, okay, like I guess I'll sacrifice my two Eldrazi and get this back to my hand anyways, because we're gonna die. So there you go. And Annihilator one is nice. Uh yeah, some players really don't like Annihilator. Uh I think it's so uh, okay in moderation, I guess. I don't know. Moving on. Essence Reliquary artifact for three mana and white. Tap, return another target, permanent you control, and all auras you control attached to it to Zora's hand. Active only during your turn. That's nice. So I mean yeah i guess so here's the thing like enchantress decks like aura specific enchantress decks like something like shram could definitely consider this one to be like okay like i bounce whatever creature i have that's aura up and then i just put it back into play and i can recast my auras and get all my enchantress and constellation triggers again it's like be absolutely huge it's gonna be a good way to save one of your creatures and all your auras from something the active only during your turn is a huge downside to this though because it's only like if you're if you're reacting on your turn to something again like if an opponent is going to like oh, okay i swing with my voltron commander and they're like ha, ha, ha i will destroy it and you're like no you won't i'll save it yay but like most of the time when you want to save stuff it's like oh okay it's on an opponent's turn and they cast like a wrath of god can't activate this so i don't think this would be overpowered if it was activated on any turn I, maybe i'm wrong on that maybe it'd be like one more mana i don't know but like i think that it's gonna that's gonna really stop the amount of play that this sees Again, though, if you, like, have a heavy aura-based strategy where you, like, what, like, maybe, like, a light pause deck-ish, where you can, like, you get extra value, value from, like, replaying those things and are, like, low to the ground, then maybe consider that one. Or that, that one, I think there's another one now that uh, reduces the cost of your auras, too, so keep that in mind, too. Moving on. Kami of Jealous Thirst. A 1-3 spirit for 3 mana and black death touch. Pay 4 and a black. Each point loses 2 life and you gain 2 life, but it costs exactly 4 and a black less to activate, so you can activate for free. If you draw 3 more cards this turn... Active only once each turn, so that's probably a good thing because that would be infinite, if not. Uh, <laughs> but yes, um, draw three more cards each turn, so that, that that counts on anyone's turn, so keep that in mind. You got a lot of ways to draw a lot of cards, sure. If not, uh, yeah, this 1 3 Death Toucher is not all that good. Next up, Path of Annihilation, Enchantment 4, 4 mana in green, Devoid. It's got no color, which usually doesn't matter, but sometimes it does. Enters the battlefield, create two zero one Eldrazi spawns that can be sacrificed for mana. Eldrazi control have tap at one mana of any color. And then whenever you cast a creature spell, mana value seven or greater, you gain four life. If you have an Eldrazi tribal deck, absolutely. If you've got like a changeling tribal deck, absolutely. If not, probably not. I mean, it kind of like is, I mean, in a way, picture this though, I guess in a way, like if you need like a big burst of mana, you're like, okay, I pay four mana. I get this in play. I get two Eldrazi spawns. Next turn, I tap them for one mana each. Then I sacrifice them for one mana each, and I just generate an extra four mana. So it's kind of like a like a um, temporary ramp spell in that way. Like, can I really boost you to like again? Like, if you just had four mana on that turn, and the next turn you play a land, and then you just then now you're at nine, so it could really boost you, I guess. Pretty specific on what that does. Yeah, I mean, uh, casting creatures spell made of value seven. If you have like a bunch of big mana creatures and you really care about life gain too, like those, are, that's more few and far between. Usually, when it comes to like life gain, it's more like okay, like I built a deck around life gain. Yeah, I mean, Eldrazi Tribal is probably the place for this. Outside of that, unless you really want like that, you know, ramp boost of mana, then yeah, consider it. Moving on, or Changeling Tribal, I should say. Don't bump the microphone much. What are you doing? All right, next up, Scoa Ember Mage. Oh my gosh, 
I missed this. I'm sorry, everyone. I did not realize that this is a legendary creature that is common. Oh, I made a mistake not realizing that. Okay, anyways. I was just like, why does it say legendary on this common? I just kept going back and forth. Okay. 4-4 four, four, Goblin Wizard for 6 mana in red. That is legendary in common. Is this our first? Okay, like outside of like very old before they really had like, you know, distinctions on rarity. Is this our very first common commander? And I'm not, I guess, I mean, Prismatic Piper, like not considering that as well. I guess that needs to be considered probably, but like, I don't know. Weird. Okay. Enters the battlefield as 4 damage any target. Grand Jury discarding another card named. Oh, that's unfortunate. Sacrifice two mountains deals 4 damage any target. That's unfortunate. So yeah, like in Commander, you're not going to be able to utilize this unless you literally like make a token copy of it. I mean, I guess here's the thing. I guess, okay. You would need in red to really make this work for the most part. You would need, um, <laughs> you would need, well, like mirror box in play or like mirror gallery, like a way to make legendary rule not matter. You would need to make a token copy of this, which in red are temporary tokens for the most part. Then you need to like bounce this back to your hand and then discard it. <laughs> and then sacrifice two mountains and then four damage target. It's not worth it, obviously. It'd be really bad, but I want to see someone try to build around that. Uh, so when it comes to like building around this, I'd focus on the ETB, I guess, like doubling, tripling up the ETB for damage, maybe giving it lifelink if you can, like, I don't, there's not too many ways to like grant lifelink, like in red, just across the board. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. Probably just using going to be using the ETB, I guess would probably be the best way to do that. Like you're making clone copies of it temporary clone copies that would go away or yeah not so many blink effects in red either so it's interesting yay <laughs> i think it's it's funny they made a common commander though but grandeur yeah it's just like uh, it doesn't really work in commander moving on strix serenade swan song yeah this is this is gonna be uh reminiscent of that instant for a single blue man i like what they did with again the uh the strix serenade swan song uh yeah alliteration uh counter target artifact creature planeswalker spell its control creates a 2-2 blue bird creature token with flying correct me in the comments below if i'm wrong on this but i believe swan song is counter a uh instant sorcery or uh enchantment i believe let me know in the comments below and it makes a 2-2 bird as well with flying swan song is an incredibly uh popular card especially at like higher uh more competitive tables um it is a one mana counter a lot of things spell that there's not too many one mana spells out there that counter a lot of things. Uh, and the downside is a lot less in commander than it is in other formats because like the downside is, okay, you get a two, two flyer. Cool. Um, in a one-on-one, -on -one, that's like one tenth of one player's life, the opponent's life in commander. It is, uh, I mean one twentieth of your life because you're at 40, but also it's basically like one sixtieth of the table's life. Did I get that right? I don't know. There's 120 life between all of your opponents. So yeah, I think so. The, the opponents of the player who's getting the bird. So yeah, it, it doesn't matter all that much that you're giving them the bird. Who cares? Uh, but yes, what it's countering does matter. Artifact, relevant. Creature, relevant. For the vast majority of playgroups, the vast majority of times, Planeswalker, unless you're playing against literally a Super Friends deck, is irrelevant. It is a permanent type that you'd much rather have nearly any other permanent type out there outside of battle in that spot. So two of the three work. So like, I wouldn't even consider that part all that much. I'd be like, do I want a one mana counter spell that counters an artifact or creature? Yeah, it's very good. Again, especially since like the vast majority of commanders out there are creatures. I mean, yes, I guess there are planeswalkers too. So that'd be, that'd be the thing. Like you encounter your opponent's planeswalker commander, but there are certain commanders that are like sorcery spells or enchantments nowadays because of NDFCs. Um, outside of that, though, I mean, like it is just a one mana counter a commander spell. Countering creatures as well and artifacts are both very relevant. Like, I don't know. I'm going back and forth on this because, like, the other one does apply to more things. It applies to instant sorceries and enchantments are all always relevant for the most part, right? I mean, enchantments, I guess, the thing where it's like that could be kind of like the planeswalk where it's like only sometimes relevant. I'd say the other one has more application than this one. Typically, when it comes to countering things, you want to counter non creature spells. Again, like, that's why, like, negate sees more play than essence scatter, right? It just does because it's much better to counter non creature spells the best more of the time. This, again, like when it comes to the non-creature spell that you're countering, Planeswalker doesn't, let's say, doesn't matter that much when it comes to the, the formula. Artifact matters more than that. The other one counters three kinds of non-creatures. So I'd say that Swan Song, I could be very wrong on this, but I'm thinking Swan Song is going to see a lot more play than this one. Not that this one's going to see no play, it will see play. 
but it's gonna be a lot uh, that one's gonna see a lot more than this one in my opinion so i still think it's good i still think it's good but i don't like what they do with it but it's gonna see like it's not quite as good as swan song i don't believe ironically swan song could counter this this cannot counter swan song moving on but that could counter an actual swan which I'm not sure how many spawn cards are out there, but there's probably some. Tamio meets the story circle. Uh, saga for one and a blue. Uh, the first one. Until your next turn, whenever a creature attacks you, your planeswalker control. Minus one, two, minus two, minus zero. The second one, discard any of your cards. Investigate twice for each card. Discard this way. The third one, show up the three tar cards from your graveyard into your library. So discard any of your cards. Investigate twice for each card. Discard this way. That's nice. I mean, being able to investigate that much. Like, it's kind of like you make a bunch of clues. Like, you aren't you aren't going up on card advantage though right away like you are just going down and you're like you're literally losing card advantage right away you are discarding cards but you are going up a potential card advantage again because you are turning that into twice as many clues it does cost mana to sacrifice those clues obviously uh to actually draw those cards back re replace those cards like it's like a delayed rummaging effect in that way kind of but like if you have like a clue based strategy absolutely consider this one if you've got like an artifact like number of artifacts matter strategy absolutely consider this one as well shuffling three cards from uh your grave in your library is nice um a little bit of protection like outside of clue decks i don't see this one really seeing all that much play or like if you have like a discarding matters deck maybe but like again you have to wait till you get to the second lore counter yeah it's just okay Moving on, unstable amulet. Oh no, this amulet is unstable. Why am I holding it? Artifact for two in red and is about to get two energy counters. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, it deals one damage to each opponent. <laughs> Prosper decks. Yay. Prosper. Damage. Uh, tap for two energy. Uh, tap pay two energy. Exile the top card of your library and play it uh, until you exile another card with unstable amulet. So yeah, I guess a Prosper deck, you have to decide like, do I really care that much about just getting one impulse draw out of this it's like it's an interesting impulse draw because it's like it's a permanent impulse draw until you use it again so you can just like keep that card perpetually there and ready to go whenever you want it um if you're not an energy deck or a proliferate deck i should say you're not gonna be able to utilize it again unless you i guess a blink strategy could technically sure uh but yeah do you care that much about whenever you're casting things from exile damaging each opponent probably if you are in like those kind of impulse draw cast things from outside uh again like that counts also like cascade that counts also flashback that counts anywhere anywhere outside your hand um plot i guess as well so yeah being able to do a lot of damage yeah i mean i think decks like that should up and consider it even this is one of those cards again that like kind of like i've talked about this with some other cards too like if this card literally just had that on it the, that part just the middle part on it like decks would might could some people might consider that more be but because it has like the energy thing like well i'm not playing an energy deck and i can only activate it once so, like i'm not going to use it but like do you like that middle part yeah so like just consider that it just like the other part's like the cherry on top so yeah i think that this one probably will see some play with those impulse decks moving on volt storm angel quite the name four four angel of flying cost five mana enters about to get 300 counters begin of combat return you may pay two energy when you do choose one it gains vigils life lane turn other creature control plus plus one um this seems more like a it's energy deck to consider it potentially it seems like a limited card uh it's just okay but now this episode is coming to a close let me know what your thoughts are on these cards in the comments below again i can't believe i missed that that one goblin was actually legendary though it's common let me know where i miss like ones that are actually common that are legendary as well again not counting like really old cards before they actually had like rarity symbols attached to them and also technically not counting like prismatic piper because that's like for a, like, a draft scenario let me know though um yeah i guess i could look this up afterwards too but i might forget too when i'm editing this regardless speaking of editing this i will have the cards that have already been that were spoiled as well recently that have already been leaked and already talked about or they are reprints as well so make sure you check out those cards coming up right now after i say thanks again and have a good one
This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.